Hello and welcome to Warhammer Wednesday. You can see in the title, this is going to be my unboxing and review of the Space Marine Typhon Heavy Siege Tank. It's a massive tank. I saw it, I really liked the model, and then I looked at the rules and I was like, wow, uh, a big, big cannon on it. 48 inch range, ignores cover, yeah. Let's have a look. Now, I am a tool. There's a couple of models that I uh, had already done the unboxings of and I looked at back at my camera and I thought they, they weren't uh, relevant, so I just went and deleted them. So unfortunately, I can't show you it coming out of a of a bigger box, but I'm, I'm gonna show you it coming out of this and I have pre-washed pre all the items and I think I've clipped them off the, the sprues and things. So one of these will set you back about 105 quid and then you got your, your stupid, stupid like 15, 20% blimmin' delivery price or something crazy. Let's have a little look. I mean, if you live about an hour away or so from Nottingham, I don't, unfortunately, but if you do, it's always best just to pop in and blimmin' go and get the, pick up the model yourself, because their, their delivery is just, they need to sort it out. Let's have a look. So you've got these instructions. Before I purchased this model, I did ask them if it was the same for the Cerberus and the Spartan because I heard rumours that they'd changed the, the uh, track units for the Spartan because before all of the track pieces were separate and then I heard that the Spartan has them all as as one one piece. So I did quick research, quick email, found out that yes it's the same track unit as the Spartan so it, it's a must now because it's it's such an easy easy model to kind of put together and um, so yeah that's what it will eventually look like yeah I don't know I might put heavy bolters on there right let's have a little look so like I say I've already pre-washed it and clipped clipped them off the sprues and tidied them up a little bit but this is the big cannon I'm talking about this big Bertha I mean look at that it's huge absolutely huge anyway so that's that you get these these are the track pieces that I'm referring to look it's all one now um, which is so so much more easier yes the doors they still haven't sorted them out they don't fit in there properly at all no matter how much shaving and things you do um, which is a bit bit of a shame yeah so the only bit that I mean they're, they're connected I think there and there to the the big well it's this basically and the main main part there so you it's great because they're not actually the main bit isn't attached to this so you don't run the risk of clipping that and then it all removing it with with the the vent it's actually attached to the flat part of the tank track and it's just little details like that which just makes your hobby in that much much of a of an ease so yeah that's your big um track unit of course you get a second one so go okay, something like that and then this is your top unit really nicely detailed I've already cleaned this up so that I'm happy with it this is your floor so I'll, I'll dry construct it this is your front this is called sort of like the cannon uh, shielding this is your engine exhaust block this is your rear armor and then you've got all the exhausts I've got four of them and then you've got the options for either heavy spon heavy bolter side sponsons or last cannon side sponsons part of the exhaust, some more shielding the viewfinders and things for the guns and then you've got this this uh, Horus Heresy it looked like it looks like Mark II armor with a single visor it's quite nice though 
So you can have him just popping out of the hatch. And yeah, there you go. So that is all of the parts that you have to build this. I'll just, I'll just very quickly just see if I can. So yeah, I can't get a really accurate kind of dry fit or anything at the moment, but it's going to look something like that with the big big cannon at the front. Okay, so that's kind of like the unboxing side of things. What I'm going to do now is just shave it all down, clean up the parts, file them, and then just assemble the model. And in the next scene, you'll see the, the tank fully completed. So join me in part two. And welcome to part two. This tank is massive. I mean, it, it barely fits into the camera shot. This Space Marine Legion Typhon siege tank is just a whopper. And that cannon is huge. I'll talk a little bit about the rules and things in a moment, but just take a gander. I've sort of elevated the cannon to its maximum sort of elevation. Um, it might even be able to go a little bit higher, but I've done the measurements and its trajectory that will that will easily hit its intended target of, at the 48 inch range or, or whatnot, or even over a couple of buildings, something like that. But uh, it's just a whopper of a tank. This Remember guys, this is my first experience of a of this chassis of, of Land Raider where the tracks are on the outside. What I've done with the uh, the last cannons too is I've magnetized them and I've glued them properly so they can move and they can go up and down um, and then I put these magnets in there, oh, quite strong magnets too and they, they work really well and uh, obviously once it's sprayed you, you won't see the, the silver um, you could even put a bit of tape on them and then that would then you could see the silver if you wanted to do that but yeah guys this this tank is huge I really love it uh, it's so heavy as well I mean good luck trying to put this in your your normal sort of standard carry case because this is this is heavy this sort of feels like the rules sort of portray it as as this tank that can tank shock other vehicles with plus one um, penetration or something like that it's it's just oh it's just incredible I mean with, with the Cerberus I, I still fail to to understand why the rear armor is one less um, because it's exactly the same chassis that might have been an oversight I'm not sure but uh, maybe you could say well with tank hunters things like that the majority of the armor is on the front because that's where they're sort of going to be hit from or where they take the most damage but still if it's the same land raider chassis and it's still classified as a uh, a super heavy tank then you'd think that the armor would be the same all round especially this type of land raider but the cannon is huge um, just show you uh, the underneath of her as well there's a few gaps in places that i might go over with some green stuff but i'm not too fussed because the top and the front of the tank went went together really well the it, it's wobbling wobbling a little tiny bit but that is literally because my table is is bowed and that's that's because i had a big telly on this table at one point um so i i understand that but if i put it on a more flat yeah, I'm moving it and it's not wobbling at all. So it is just due to the table, not my own sort of modelling uh, skill. But I really like it. I think it's amazing. I can't wait to just spray this black and then go straight onto the tracks and start the shading and do all the metallic parts and things like that. I really, really like it. Um, oh, it, it I mean, yes, it's expensive, but <laughs> the weight of it, you, you know... It's no wonder it's expensive because it's just a really lovely um, machine, just a really lovely model. You definitely get what you pay for. Um, spare parts, you probably see them just just making a little bit of an entrance here. You get this guy, which you could use on a on a Predator or or even a Demos pattern um, Rhino or something, just to add a bit more sort of style to one of those vehicles but you get him on there uh, I didn't want to peering out over the uh, hatch because the cannon looks like it's in a firing position and let's face it the sound from this this uh, cannon it would just explode his helmet surely anyway so that's him and then you get the the heavy bolters sort of sponsons um, I think 
you, you could put tiny little magnets in there and sort of clip them in. I've seen I've seen people instead of magnetise the turret itself, I've seen them magnetise the top and the bottom and then just take the last cannon out and swap in the, the heavy bolter. That might be an option. There are plenty of videos out there how to do that, but I wanted to maintain some sort of anti-tank uh, capability for this even though that cannon itself is pretty pretty damaging to tanks anyway and speaking of which let's, let's just go over the rules shall we now if you know me you know that I like to spray and completely finish and paint my models before I go into any strategy and things like that and um, I'll still do that with this model but I'm gonna try something something new because it's taken me a long time and um, from building my models to having them fully painted and that's just because I've got a lot to do and I've got the Warlord Titan that I'm just working on every single day um, to try and get that finished but either way I'm trying something new here so I'll just give you a few of the, the rules and things and that will sort of finish off uh, the, the end of this review but I'll, I will do another showcase video at some point of the tank so Legion Typhon heavy siege tank it is a super heavy vehicle so it does count it does take up one of your Lords of War choices it's armor it's a land raider chassis so it's 14 all round it's got six hull points though which of course if you if you own a Spartan you know that it that it's got one extra hull point than the Spartan five's pretty decent but six just just adds to that it's ballistic skill again is the same as four but the the main sort of unique selling point of this this tank is its Dreadhammer Siege Cannon. It's a 24 inch range cannon if it moves, but if it's, if it's stationary, it's 48 inch range. It's strength 10, it's AP1, it's a massive blast of seven inch. So it's not the apocalyptic blast, but it's the one a bit lower than that. But no cover saves are allowed, which is just phenomenal. You fire this into a building, into a jungle, into some barricades, wherever you fire this, they're not getting a cover save from a strength 10 AP1 shot. So you could move this vehicle six inches, 12 inches, and then leave it there. And then you can just tilt it on the spot all game. And at 48 inch range, not much is gonna be walking away from it. Even with um, toughness five creatures, things like that, it's just gonna blow them away. Another special rule it has is this thing called crushing weight, which adds plus one to all rolls on the Thunder Blitz ta table when making a ram or tank shock attack. Yeah, you can give it last cannons for an extra 40 points, so then it's it's then it'll cost you almost 400 points there because it's 350 points base. Um, but you even have to pay for the heavy bolters, which is 20. So for 20 extra points, it's probably worth you getting the the last cannons. You can give it Armoured Ceramite, which I would strongly suggest you do. And you can also give it a Pintle Mounted Weapon, such as a Twin Link Bolter, Combi Weapon, Heavy Flamer, Heavy Bolter, or Multi Melter. It would be nice to give it a Heavy Bolter. That would be pretty cool. Or you could even equip it with Heavy Bolters and then a Heavy Bolter on the top, just to mop up the Light Infantry. And as it's a super heavy vehicle, each weapon can fire at different units. So you could even split fire your heavy bolt all three of your heavy bolters if you if you wished but you could give it a multi melter to give it some close range anti-tank support i may well invest in that in the future pop open the hatch um or or just put the multi melter or heavy bolter somewhere on there i'm still undecided but i just wanted to get the model finished and and um, made and everything like that for you but those people out there that are wondering should i get this or the cerberus I was in two minds, I'm probably going to get Cerberus anyway. Uh, if you're in two minds, it depends on who you're going up against. This is Horus Heresy, this is 40k. There are going to be a lot of tanks in your other opposing um, army, or there's going to be one or two beastie tanks. But I, I think that this serves the purpose a little bit better, because you've got your 48 inch range, strength 10, um, you've got your 2d6 um, for penetration, and pick the highest or whatnot, because it's a primary weapon, and you've got no, the no cover saves, which is just incredible. And you've got the 14 all round. I'm not saying that this would be easily flanked or anything like that, but compared to the Cerberus, which has rear armour of 13, and yes, the neutron laser battery is is pretty good at 72 inch range. But if you're going for something that's anti-tank, it's much better just to get a 
falchion or or, or even go for a normal size tank such as a Sakaran Venator that fulfills the role almost as, as well but just is in a more compact, much less points um, model. Uh, whereas a Cerberus is almost 400 points um, stock and then you've got to get the, the LAS cannons and things like that. It's a lot to invest in, plus that neutron laser battery has this silly feedback shock pulse special rule where it can actually end up knocking its its own hull points off whereas this you've got no no issues it's it's tried and tested very reliable and the cannon is is just incredible it's basically like a a vindicator on steroids it is it is the big mama it really is of siege siege weaponry yes you've got the earthshaker cannons and things like that but they're not as heavily armoured and of course the Earthshaker cannon as incredible as it is it's on a, a platform that only has front armour 12 and side and rear of 10 I mean side armour of 10 you get your normal space marines you get 20 of the guys firing into a, into, into a side of a, a basilisk you, you've done a pretty poor job if you've allowed that to happen but still they could just knock out a bas basilisk and the cannon yeah, it, it's okay, but it's only strength 9, it's got incredible range, but it's, again, it's only AP3, and it's only the little 5-inch blast, and it doesn't ignore cover. So this, I mean, if you can keep moving this up the board, this this is going to be a much better investment for sort of siege, siege weaponry. That's all I've got to say about the uh, Typhon Heavy Siege Tank. I think it's an incredible multi-purpose sort of vehicle. It's a shame it can't carry any Space Marines to give it some added protection, like you can't put five in there or or ten or anything like that. That is a bit of a shame. It would be nice just to have a, I don't know, like a heavy support squad in there or, or something like that. Or even just a, a squad of five Terminators. Uh, but... You can't have it all. It's a dedicated sort of siege artillery sort of platform. Um, and you, you get it for that cannon. You get it for the no cover saves and the seven inch um, uh, blast. And uh, it's it's a great tool to use to deny areas of the battlefield to, to enemies. And it's great at Terminators, great at any kind of troops really that want to take their, get their silly four or five plus cover saves it just destroys them it's an incredible tank uh and it's, it's a beautiful model i really am impressed with it and uh stay tuned because there may well be a few other vehicles from the forge world range of this uh, chassis so once again thank you ever so much for joining me today thank you for watching the emperor protects